All right, welcome back, Brigandine enthusiasts. We are going to go over the longsword. Now, the longsword is a unique type of weapon, unique to one particular kind of knight, and that is the swordsman. So I have a swordmaster here. I will show you basically what this is all kind of involves real quick here, and then we'll get into all the swords and show you what they all are and kind of what they all do. So we go into the fighter class here, and you see all these little branches moving off here and there. Uh, as soon as you become a swordsman, you cannot become a knight. So you can only be a swordsman or a knight. Knights move up to paladin, dark knight. Swordsmen just move up to swordmaster. So this is kind of what they look like. And uh, that's that's pretty much it right there. But they have a unique type of weapon, which is called... It's basically a long sword, but... Um, it's more of an Arabian sword, so it is still a longer sword, but a scimitar, a crescent, some of these are called rapiers, so it's essentially in this particular inventory here, which I guess people just kind of call long swords. So we're going to go ahead and do some equipment here. You're going to notice that if you're new to this game and you don't really know a lot about what's going on, when you go on quests, you're going to find one of these three different types here. You're going to find either this white sword here on the bottom, which is one star. You're going to find purple swords here that are put into the middle category. And the yellow or gold swords at the top, which are literally the crown gem type weapon that you could have in the game. So I just drew a little crown there, but you know, that's basically that's that's kind of what it's all about. So you're also going to see the CP move up and down on the right. You know, this green number here, it's like, why is that going up and down? Well, that's what the game dictates as the better weapon. But that doesn't necessarily mean that it's the better weapon for you in your circumstance. So we're going to look at each and every single weapon here, and we're going to talk about it. Okay, Thunder Sword. Let's go ahead and equip a Thunder Sword. Let's see what that does. So the Thunder Sword, basically all it shows me when I equip it is it gives me an extra green orb for attack. Right here, this little green. And essentially that will just help me attack things that are are blue elemental defense a little bit better. And that's all it's going to do for you. So, all right, let's equip a different sword here. Let's go down to the swift sword. So the swift sword will actually give me attack bonus. So give me three attack and five agility. Which agility is pretty good this game. And agility will help you uh, hit more and evade more. That's really what agility means. Um, if I have more agility than you, well, then I'm likely going to hit you more than you're going to hit me. You know, if you're thinking about, you know, being one of the characters in this game. So we're going to go ahead and equip that. You see that my stats have changed. Okay, so that's what the swift sword does. Let's go ahead and look at the light long sword. All right, so the light long sword, you can see my attack value is going down because, you know, the swift sword gave me attack. And it gave me agility, and now that I'm going to equip a new sword, my stats are going down. That's not good. What are we going to do? Well, let's see what this thing does. Okay, so it gives me accuracy. So let's say my agility was in the 50s or 40s or 60s or 70s or something like that. And I really, I really needed to increase my accuracy because my guy's just missing too much. We give him a light sword, and we call it a day. All right, so... You know, let's move on here. I know there's these other swords here, but I'm just saying in case you're questing and you're only finding the, the white swords, then obviously this is the pick you got. <laughs> so uh, let's look at this. The steel sword. All right, the steel sword is attack of eight. What did the uh, swift sword do? Attack of three. But this is attack of eight, so this attack is so much better. It's going to help you get more damage overall. Attack value right here is the, the number that you need to know as far as how much damage you are actually going to do in battle towards something else. Strength value just helps determine the attack value. So the strength value really just boosts the attack value and that's all I can tell about strength. So just focus on attack if you wanna be a lot stronger. I'm sorry, a lot stronger. Uh, people have influenced me with that word too much. Um, all right, so we're gonna move up to the purple swords conflicting rapier now This is interesting because You notice the attacks going down because there is no attack For this sword, right? But there is 15 MP 
There is eight intelligence, and look at this. Conflicting swords. Now, there's some other conflicting weapons in this game, and they all look exactly the same. They have a dark element and a white element on their attack value, which basically means you can attack angels and demons better with this kind of weaponry. So if you're looking to take down the uh, ethereal types of things in this game, or the, you know, knights and dark knights and things like that, conflicting rapier is going to be your weapon of choice. Okay, let's look up at the dark thunder rapier. Alright, so the dark thunder rapier is really interesting. Now, we just went from white and black to green and black, or green and purple. What, however you want to say it. I'm used to saying black orbs, but I'm slowly getting used to saying purple orbs because that's the new that's the new uh, color being used for that. But we do get 12 attack, which is pretty good. The only unfortunate side to it is our accuracy is down, but our counter damage is up. So it's more like if you like to play more tanky, you don't really like to be too aggressive, you just like to sit there and take the hit and uh, try to play the evasive tank, this is going to be a good sword for you. Especially if, you know, archers are trying to attack you, um, you know, uh, or not so much archers, I would have to say probably like, for this orb in particular, I'd have to say probably like a sea serpent snake, um, something like that, something with more blue elements, so probably even possibly temple knights. And stuff like that could be a little bit better for this. So I'd have to say this is a good one for that kind of playstyle. All right, so let's pop that sword on there. So now we have it equipped. All right, let's put on the um, lightning rapier. Now this is a little bit different than the dark one. You know, the other one, the dark was a green and a purple orb. This one is a green and white orb. So we actually gained accuracy now. We didn't get as much attack, but we gained accuracy, so you're trading a possibly stronger attack for a possibly better chance to land the hit. Now, that's your call on how you want to play the game, but that's that's what's here. So you get a white orb attack so you can take down demons and uh, dark knights better. Alright, let's move up to this sword here. Holy Thunder Rapier. So Holy Thunder... It's It seems a little uh, interesting that the um, translation and the way that they did it, this lightning rapier, this is a white and a green, and this one is holy thunder, but it's just double green. I don't know if the translators messed up with the naming, but I can't say one way or another, but this is what it does. So it gives you attack bonus and it gives you agility. So it gives you attack and agility. So it's kind of the better of the two in a in a way, because you do get an attack bonus, but you also get agility bonus to almost guarantee your hit, and uh, extra green for attacking sea serpents, snakes, and stuff like that, and uh, you're pretty good. So, it's a pretty good sword. Put on the Holy Thunder Rapier right there, as you can see there. Alright, now we're going to move on to the final two swords here, the Arid Crescent. Now you can see the hit points are going up here too. So hit points are going up as, as well. Attack is going up, agility is going down. But our defense goes up too, which is pretty cool. So what does this do? Plus 25 attack. 25 attack, 7 defense, 20 HP. Evasion, you can evade more with this sword. Critical damage plus 10. Plus 10%. This is an amazing sword. Just saying, this is one of the best swords in the game for... A swords master a sword master but evasion and critical damage plus so what critical damage means is that if you land a crit hit you will do 10% more damage with that crit so that crit goes up from uh, 25 to 35 percent I believe I believe that's what it was so you're probably going to do 35% more damage with a crit hit. Crit rate determines whether you can land that critical attack. Crit damage just increases the damage. So, alright, let's look up here. Lightning Scimitar. What's the difference between that one and this one? 
Now here, we're seeing this crit rate. So you have a crit usually of, uh, I believe it's 10%, and if you chain the enemy, it's 15%. Now it's plus five, so it's gonna show 15% in a battle. And if you chain the enemy in, it's gonna show 20%. So you have a better chance of landing your critical attacks. Maybe not doing any more that much more damage, but just getting more of them in general. You get three green orbs. For this, you get 14 attack, agility, and MP. So it's a great sword. It's an absolute great sword. So what's the difference between this one and the other one? Well, the Arid Crescent doesn't give you any more green orbs. So you can't stack a lot more green orbs. But it the but if you're you know hitting with more orbs, you're adding a little, you know, two or four percenters to your damage with each orb added. So just note that. Plus this is 25 attack too. You know? Or this one's 14, so you know, <laughs> you get to pick what you use. Um let's go ahead and just equip this one here. Okay. Now that's basically on me. We don't have any more white orbs, but we got critical damage, evasion. Let's go look at his his character persona. Critical 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 damage up B. Hit point recovery. Okay, so another thing I want to show you before we close out here, which is gonna be really quick, um, but I wanna show you that there are differences. So if you don't have, so if if you're looking at this and you're like, well, I have a mixture of all these swords, I'll equip a mixture. Best thing you can do if you are have maybe like one purple weapon and a whole bunch of, you know, white weapons, you might want to just equip a whole bunch of white gear for the bonus set. But if you have like two or three purple weapons or two or three uh, yellow kind of weapons, then try to go for that set. But here's what the set bonuses look like, okay? So equip a Thunder Sword, we'll equip a, it's supposed to be called a Tough tough Jacket. I, I think the translators went with Touch instead, but I believe the other ones are Tough. <laughs> so this one is called Touch. Uh, maybe that was not on purpose. I'm not sure though. We're gonna go ahead and look at this. Now, if we add this here, you're going to see how our stats went up from agility 90 to 95. All the stats go up by 5. So you can see there's this little all-star bonus here. All-star bonus. We get an all-star bonus. We're playing baseball again here, everybody. Um, not really. I'm just joking. But All right, so you get this little bonus there. If we go into purple stuff, you're going to see how everything's going to go down by 5 because... Now we're equipping a different sword. We might get some other stats, but we, we literally lost the bonus from having a set. So having a set means a set of the same color. So we're going to go ahead and uh, equip this black breastplate. We're going to equip the general's gauntlets. And we're going to go ahead and check out the... Uh, we're going to put on a lapis animus, which will bring us back to life. Uh, so you can see how the stats went up from up to 7. Look at that. 90 to 97. So go up by 7. So when you get a purple set, you get a bonus of 7 for all the stats over here on the right. Except for mobility. Mobility will pretty much stay practically the same. But, you know, everything else here is going up by 5, 7. And then I believe the last tier is 10. So let's go ahead and... Uh, equip this sword here you can see how I actually we kind of lost a lot of stats but you know now that we have a lot of things here I'm gonna go equip this thing equip that thing and I'm gonna go ahead and do this so you can see how this how his stats are going up agility is 105 to 115 look at that let's go up 10 points so each set bonus is an increase from 5 or 7 or 10 so if you know it depends on what you want to equip and why and what it's going to make you look like now i've got three green orbs for attack with this particular weapon on let's um just back out and we'll look at him you can see how his attack went up this high look at how much stuff is on him 
He has every orb for his meter filled. And defense too. But, yeah. That's basically the guide for the swords. So, the uh, long swords, that is. Although, I would probably call this more of a scimitar type class than the long sword. But, it is a longer sword, you know. And, uh, anyways, that pretty much does it. The, um, d there are no leaders that equip this weapon. I mean, as far as rulers are concerned, there are no rulers that equip the weapon. This is a side shoot class that you can go for. And this, this build for this particular knight is built for evasion and landing critical hits to do massive damage. They prefer the forest, so they're going to get uh, evasion bonuses in the forest, particularly. And if they're in other kinds of terrain, they will lose their evasion and uh, hit percentage bonuses. So that's all I have for this video. I hope this helped you out. Please leave uh, some comments down below. Let me know what you thought of the video. I have more videos to come. I'm going to go through all the weapons, all the armor, all the accessories and equipment. And I'm also going to get into knights. And I'm going to get into monsters too. So I have a lot of videos coming up very, very soon. And uh, please subscribe for more. Hit the bell too. That would be fantastic. And I hope to see you in the next video. And other than that, take care, and I'll see you in some later on uh, Brigandine LPs, of which I do as well. You can check out some of the uh, links down below, and you can check out some of the cards up on the top right too. Alright, take care, and I'll see you in the next help guide video.